How are we doing, you guys? Joshua Dollar here. And Miles Matias. We are here for another Credit for Dropouts lesson. All right, we wanted to give you guys some rock solid good info. Get that mouse <laughs> out of the shot. Um, rock solid info right now. I wanted to show you guys something that really nobody knows about that you really, really should know about because it's a tool given to you by the government to help protect you. It's called CFPB.gov. That stands for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So basically, their entire purpose is to protect consumers when it comes to credit and lending and all these other factors. So, um, Miles, what are what are some things you've used CFPB for in the past? Because you, you've done it a lot more than I have. I have about 70 to 90 complaints. A lot of it was just personal testing to see the power of CFPB. But what CFPB does is when you submit a complaint against a creditor, let's say you have identity fraud. They're going to look into that and make sure that it gets taken off your report. If you have a bunch of hard inquiries that you did not authorize um, that are not attached to any of your open accounts, they'll remove those. And you, you get a call from the CEO's, or you get a call from the executive office. So it's generally the CEO's office. You'll get letters in the mail. Um, I disputed a Macy's inquiry, like a Macy's credit card. And I got a, a wet ink, blue wet ink signature from the executive office in my local area from Macy saying that they were submitting the paperwork to Experian and I think TransUnion that pulled the hard pull and they removed it from my report within, it took them a long time, it took about maybe two months, but they were still able to get it off my report. So those are my experiences with it. If you're just trying to fix up stupidity, like you got some hard inquiries, want to delete them, it doesn't work that way. But if you do have legitimate identity theft or you do have issues with a creditor, like whether it's late payments or they don't want to just work with you, submit a complaint and they're going to they're gonna change their attitude towards you. Because these go in public record that people can see even your response to the company and their response back to you. And they have to respond within 30 days and if they don't, see if people will ding that company and they'll tell them, hey, this company did not respond to the complaint. Um, so there's a lot of power. In some cases, you can even get payment. So if you <clears throat> have a collection that shouldn't be there, you have a court judgment that shouldn't be there, a lot of times for your trouble, um, the agency, the creditor, or the collector will have to issue you like a payment for damages. Because anything that's fraudulent on your report is preventing you from getting credit. Because it's, it's damaging to your reputation in your credit report. So I don't have much to say about CFPB, but there's a lot of ways to use it. If you have old addresses that are not pertinent to your report and you dispute them with the creditor or the credit bureau and they don't want to take them off, you can submit a CFPB complaint, list those addresses you want removed, and oftentimes they'll remove them. Yeah, there's not really anything bad that can come out of making a complaint with CFPB. Do you even know of like, like there's really nothing bad that can happen with CFPB? The way I was, I was taught about CFPB and the way I was told to look at it is think of it as like the mommy and daddy of the bureaus. You know, every time the bureaus do something to you that you feel is wrong or violates your rights or they're not working with you or just making your life difficult some way, somehow, go submit a complaint to CFPB and usually the, the company will get some sort of slap on the wrist or they'll get something done. Um, it doesn't always give you what you're looking for, but sometimes, you know, you, you are able to get what it was that you uh, complained about. Uh, there was a, about a year ago, I had a student of mine get his uh, Chase accounts closed down and um, he actually filed through CFPB a complaint and sent in some stuff to Chase and the bureaus and was able to get his stuff reopened. Um, doesn't always work, uh, but this is you know pretty much step one for any sort of uh, a dispute or any sort of fight against a bureau or a bank against you. Um... Else we can throw into There's not much me. to comment on CFPB. It is a credit repair tool that's free to the public mm -hmm. and doesn't require any type of advanced knowledge of credit repair. It puts you in talks with a decision maker that can make a decision on your report. Whether it's with the credit bureaus, the bureaus, in my experience, don't really respond. They won't call you, they won't they'll send you letters in the mail, just kind of brushing off everything you're saying. If you do it against a creditor, like at a bank, like if you do, if you have an inquiry with Chase having a problem with Chase and CFPB them, it'll put you in contact with a decision maker. So when I can make a decision, send a letter to the bureaus to change information that's on your report, whether it's inaccurate, an error, 
Or let's say you have a late payment. Let's say you had a phone plan, uh, you closed the account, but then they issued you a late payment or something like that. That's not relevant to you. You could submit a CFPB complaint against them, and more than likely you would get that taken off your report. Um, so it puts you in talks with a decision maker, and that's the most important thing about it. Yeah. So when you can't get through to just regular reps, you'll be talking to someone from an executive office that can make a decision. Yeah, the main thing we want you guys to get, a, get out of this video is to just understand that CFPB is there, and it's one of the tools that you can use uh, when, when you're trying to really get anything done with your credit or your reports or your lending, anything like that, even just regular bank accounts. Um, this is a protection that we have. Most people don't know about this. Okay, so this, so this is something you will, you'll want to look up and go check it out. Go look at the website, search it around. You know, they have little articles and stuff that you can read through other people's complaints, things they've complained about. So that might give you an idea. It's like, oh, you know, this happened to me. I, can, I didn't know I can complain about this. Um, and this is something you can take up through CFPB. Um, also, uh, there are other ways that you can go about removing things from your report that do work a little bit better than CFPB. It's actually a combination of using CFPB and other methods as well. We do have a credit for dropouts repair system. If you guys are interested in uh, getting your credit repaired, if you have anything wrong with it, send us a DM, uh, either of our Instagrams or even just a message on credit for dropouts. And uh, we will work with you and see if that's something that we can fix for you. Um, but if you're wanting to go yourself and do it, do it yourself and do that route, CFPB is step one. In regards to credit repair, what we do is account removal. So if you have collections, negative accounts with a ton of late payments, those are that's what we do. Inquiries. Mm -hmm. If you just have a lot of inquiries because you got a, were applying for a house or a lease and you went to the car company and they pulled your credit like 20 times, or you went to go get a loan and they pulled your credit 20 times. Those are things we can met, we can fix easily. Where we can't help you is public records. Like if you have a court judgment in your public records section of your credit report, or if you have a bankruptcy in your public records um, re, um, section of your credit report, that is something that is very difficult to remove and more than likely we can't do anything like that because that has to do with the courts. And normally a lot of that stuff has to be done in person. There are ways to opt out and get things taken care of, but they're high risk and you can get in trouble legally for stuff. So, so don't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't All even right. mention it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you again on the next video.